All right, so let's look at an example problem. Let's say we have a cannonball launching at 45 degrees at a velocity of 50 meters per second. And the cannonball is launched at sea level, so assume the acceleration due to gravity is negative 9.81. So that looks like this. Got our cannon, 45 degrees. And we have our velocity of 50 meters per second. So what is the position, velocity, and acceleration along the horizontal and vertical at 1, 10, 100, 200, and 500 seconds? And where is the height maximized? So we can compute the acceleration, assuming no air friction or anything like that. So the acceleration in x is 0 and the acceleration in y is negative 9.81 meters per second squared. Give ourselves axes here, of x and y. And we can integrate here. So vx is 50 cosine of 45, and vy is negative 9.81 t plus 50 sine 45. So then my position in x is 50 cosine 45 times t. And my position in y is negative 9.81 divided by 2 t squared plus 50 sine 45 t plus p naught. And assuming I start at a height of 0, that's going to be 0. So if we're trying to find the position, velocity, and acceleration at 1 second, 10 second, 100, 200, and 500, the way we can do this, when we can try numerics, Two, we can look graphically. Three, we can do symbolics. So let's look at the numeric. If I want the position at one second, I can just get the position in x at one is 50 cosine 45 times one. Position in y of 1 is negative 9.81 divided by 2 t squared or 1 squared plus 50 sine of 45 times 1. So I can go and view the position at 1, 10, 100, 200, 500, just plugging in times. So we'll duplicate this in MATLAB. Let me put in here the equations for reference. So now here we go. I'm going to look at my problem. And I'll break it down into numerical, graphical, symbolic. So with my numerical, so far my numerical, let's just start with what we know the givens the ones that i'm given here are angle is 45 degrees velocity is 50 meters per second and then g is negative 9.81 meter per second per second so with that i now have times of 1, 10, 100, 200, 500 in seconds. So using our equations to the right here, we can say a x is 0, a y is negative 9.81, but I want to use my givens. So g uh, in this meter per second, as well as this, 
to keep track of units. Velocity in X is velocity times cosine of angle in meter per second. The velocity Y is G times T plus velocity times sine of angle. Again, in meters per second. The position in X is the velocity in X times T plus the initial position, zero, and the position in Y is G over two times T squared. And because I'm done with matrices, I'll go dot to the power plus plus times sine of angle times T plus zero. And these are both in meters. So now I've got the equations, and if I were to run this, uh, I'd need to replace each of the t's with time. So I can pull up this, t times, replace all, save me some time, run it, and yeah, we got times 110, 100, 200, 500. So what was it we were looking for? We were looking for position, velocity, and acceleration along horizontal and vertical at one second, 10 seconds, 100, 200, 500. So to get those, let's say A, X answers is zeros, uh, one row, and five columns because it's zero for each of those times. A y answers is a y times ones of one five then my vx answers is ones one five times vx because again it's the same across the board over vy answers is the first one that's a function of t so this will just be Vy because it'll be a constant added to a scalar multiplied by a matrix. And then Px answers is also a function of T. So we're just going to be T. And Py answers is again a function of T. So Py. Now I could pull up Ax answers. And I get the answer for each of these times. One second, 10, 100, 200, 500. So there we go. We're able to calculate that. And now we want, where is the height maximized? Well, I can check by feeding in a variety of times. And I'll start at time zero. And just go in increments uh, pretty small so that we can get a pretty close maximum. In numerically deriving this but let's say I'm gonna assume it goes to its peak in less than 100 seconds so now I can do times 2 and really I just need the Y only grab that one and switch to times 2 and then max or height equals max of T y that'll be height times of and I'll double check with doc so it's mi where the new one the i is the index so did I put this correct yes height that this would be index of height and the time of height would be times two of index of height, right? Because these are correlated. We have the times that correspond with these heights. So I need to find at what point the height is maximized and then I can plug that into times two and that will give me the time at which it's reached the maximum height. So if I run this, 
The index of height, I don't super care about, but height is 92.2574. Okay, that's the height that it's maximized. And the time of height is 4.34. So at 4.34 seconds, approximately, it's reached the top of its trajectory. So now I can do graphical. And I could start this out and approach it the same way. I can just plot times two versus my PY. Okay, and you can see it drops off pretty fast. So by about 13 seconds, it's already reached below sea level. So we'll just pretend that it's able to keep falling down through the water to see the heights further down, but this is the trajectory in any case. And I can look at, if I zoom in right here, my height somewhere right around here, 92.09. And this will be more accurate, but I can use a plot just like I could use the function and I could just zoom in and find closer to the exact height. Just incrementally get closer and closer. And I can also just use this to find, especially if I do grid on, then I could find at one second, zoom in till I see the one, Okay, right about here is one second. At 1.01, .01, it's 37.967 meters in height. Then I could go to my 10 second. It's about at an elevation, it's gone down 64 meters and so on. I could do this with all of my points. So I could do this just like I did with numerical, but let's say I wanna try it a little bit differently. That's something that's cool about this is we can approach it several different ways. So let's use F plot and I'll do F plot. And if you remember before how we did this, we had the variable input here and then we could do this function, except T will now be that variable we defined there, the variable after the at sign in the parentheses not times two. There we go. And if I run this, if you remember, it will automatically do negative five to five. So that's not super helpful because I want to start it at time zero. And I want to end it at time 500. Oops. Okay, so there we go. We have the trajectory from zero to 500 seconds. So, of course, let's label this would be time in seconds or brackets and shorthand. Y label. This would be elevation of fall over time. And then title trajectory of fall. Okay. So, I can pull up numbers from this and F plot, it'll automatically pick increments. It'll handle some of the nuance there so that I can focus more on looking at specific times and looking at the maximum and stuff like that. And now that's graphical. What about symbolic? Well, with symbolic, I can do sims, G, B, T, angle. All right, and you may have noticed, but this is why it's really key to keep an eye on units. So this is the angle in degrees. And the problem with this is sine and cosine take radians. 
So I need to convert this into radians, just like that. And now if I update this, this will give me a different value, but this will be the correct height because I'm actually plugging in radians into this. So update this to radians and all my other units should be correct. So very key when you're working in programming in particular, it's easy to lose track of that. So there we go. We run that again. That's the actual height and that's the time of height. And I run the graphical trajectory of ball over the height. So that's compensated for the angle being in radians correctly there. So now I've got my sims and I can create equation a x and this is zero equation a y is g equation b x is equation a x times t plus b times cosine of uh, cosine of angle equation b y is equation a y times t plus b times sine of angle and one thing i always like to do to just keep in mind if I'm using cosine and sine right, is if this is zero, cosine is one, right? So if my angle were zero, would it be the full velocity or would it be the zero velocity? And in fact, if the angle were zero, it would be all in X, right? So that way I can just do a quick check in my brain. Am I using cosine and sine correctly? So now I can do equation PX. And then this will be the t squared. And because we're doing symbolic, we don't need to worry about the dot caret, right? That, and then this times t, and then plus. And in order to get this more generic, we can do px naught, which is just shorthand for the initial exposition. And Equation P Y is equation A Y times T over two plus that times T plus P Y naught. And the more you do programming, the more you'll copy stuff faster and faster. So here we have all our equations, and I can apply this now. So if I wanted to figure out the times, I can just plug in equation a x and uh, I could say symbolic a x answer. And then this will be substituting into equation a x for g v T angle P X not P Y not substituting in here negative nine point eight one V is fifty T is a matrix that'll be one ten one hundred two hundred five hundred and angle is forty five times pi over 180 and p x not is zero and p y not is zero so let's check if i close this run it did i do anything wrong looks okay the symbolic ax answer zero 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 perfect that works just fine So equation Px, let's just unhide this. Let's do all of them and then we can check answers. So symbolic Ax, Y, 
and then spock bx and let's just paste that in here h a x with b x they saw it should be two of them and p x we got and p y we can do p x with p y place all escape copy this and put it back here so that lets us compute that and as you can see it's caught these uh complex with the zeros it was fine but uh it likes it in a different format than might be most helpful for us so i will change all these to double Close this. Oops. Accidentally held control and up. So move me up to the next cell. Okay. So when I run this, I'll get doubles out. Perfect. That's what I want. And now if I check against AX or uh, let's check against PY answers. Oh, I've cleared it. So Let's run this again, but not clear the variables. So now P Y answers is that and symbolic P Y answer. It's giving us something different. So why is this? Well, let's take a look. P Y equation A Y this V G times t over 2, well, oops, let me raise this clear, run the numerical, and then run this, and then p, y, answer, for comparison, and indeed that is what I want, so, as you can see there, now they're the same, so, when I'm able to correctly type out my equations, all of the approaches will give me the same answer, but there's different advantages like this. In this case, uh, if you didn't create the symbolic for G, then you could just plug in negative 9.81 here. But yeah, so you'll also notice equation AX is zero. It's not a symbolic, but it works perfectly fine when you use subs to put it in there. So. That's a good thing to know. If you did have several sets of equations and one was constant, you'd be able to plug it in with subs just fine. But yeah, so all these different approaches work just fine. You could even use F plot on symbolic PY or equation PY. And I don't want it negative five to five, so zero to 100. It doesn't like that. Why is this? Equation PY. Uh, it has too many variables. It doesn't know what to plot over. So I'd have to subs in for PY all but the time, and then it could plot over the time. So subs, equation PY, take out the T, but substitute in the angle and all that. Now, if I correctly did the parentheses correct, now I run this. Looks right. Is that what we were getting before? Negative 18. Let's send the fourth. Let's check. Oh, I've got symbolics now for G and such. So I'll run that. Then run this. Negative 12, is that what I got? I had negative 18. So what's the problem here? Well, I went to 200 instead of 500. So now when I do 500, I go to negative 12. So there we go. That's a bunch of different approaches, all of them perfectly valid. It's just a matter of certain situations may make it more useful to 
take one approach or the other more convenient. So that's why it's advantageous to understand all of these approaches. And then you can mix and match through experience. What is the best applied when? So hopefully you learned something and that makes some sense. Thanks.